Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of August 8th, 2022. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting with me today. No one else than co-host of PXM Podcast, Ro. We'll say Ro. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Thank you for having me, Elijah. Dude, anytime. First off, uh, very. let's go over very quickly. Last, uh, yesterday, we had a great... <laughs> episode 150 of the PSX, pxm podcast you guys um celebrated it by playing jeopardy i had a blast um yeah, you, you you destroyed us your score was way above all of ours let's we'll see get we'll see i don't have to worry about hitting a button though see i feel like that equalizes okay. it a bit so like i don't have to like hit a button to answer something so i'm right. just like oh boom 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 yeah but it was so fun and good questions i, I christian did he uh, get all of those questions that was all Christian. Wow. and he, yeah those he, are some good ones it. There was there's really some good really good ones. Some other ones I was like, "What?" There's a there's a couple I was like, "There was a silver the hedgehog." Quite uh, I did way I too good. One. I got that one. I I did way too good in the Sonic section. Yeah, I was like, "There's no too. way I'm doing anything in this," and I I got almost all of them. Like, it's like, how is this possible? But please go check that out. Just go to PXN Podcast and then check out episode 150. That's live right now. Correct. Just make sure it. it, it it should be. It should, should be. It yeah. should be. Yeah. All right. It should be, everyone. <laughs> so if <laughs> yeah. it's not, we got a problem. So go over yeah. there, check it out. It was a great episode. Uh, I had a lot of fun. But um, aside from that, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I'm doing good. I, okay. had a, I had a blast last night. Um, I've been busy with school, unfortunately, mm, so not a lot course. of time for gaming. Yeah. But uh, well, luckily, I'm, I'm, I'm glad the, to be here. There hasn't been too much, right? Like, we've, we've been kind of in a drought, so... I, you're not missing too too much yet i feel like thank god yeah <laughs> all right true. let's get into rapid fire really quick aw fight forever was announced shown off a bit this is a competing wrestling company to the wwe and it's being developed by ukes the former developers behind the wwe 2k games not much details in terms of date or anything else but you can check out there's a little bit of a write-up they detail like some of the matches that'll be in there so go check out that there's a lot more details out there it's just i have nothing to add to that reading from gac VGC, sorry. They report they report Nikia, I think I'm pronouncing that right. I think it's a Japanese publication. When speaking to Nintendo states that they're still in development of the of their hardware concept and launch timing of their next system, they added they believe Switch is in the middle of its life cycle. Also, unsurprisingly, they also said no new Switch hardware this year. Not surprising at all. Sony to discontinue the accolades feature on PS5. It's it was Sony's attempt to encourage positive reinforcement for players to act better in online play. You could rank people in categories like helpful or welcoming, etc, etc. Multiverses Season 1 has been delayed. No new word on the new date. The hit fighting game Multiverses first season, which was really set for August 9th. No new date was given. Nothing crazy here. Coke Media is now Play On. What a terrible name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, play on. If you tell me Coke Media, I was like play, changing their name. I'm like, well, it can't get worse, right? No, it's yeah. Play On. And I, also, it's spelled P-L-A-I-O-N. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought it was pronounced that way. Me either. So I was reading yeah. and I was like, Pleon? Ple like like yeah. almost Peon, oh, yeah. right? I was like, yeah. me, me. but no, it's it's the... Uh, luckily, the article told me because I would not have read that. It was literally yeah. said, pronounced Play On. Great. The owner of Deep Silver and subsidiary of Embracer Group is now called Play On. Where's my puppy? What are you doing? Oh. She's always so quiet, and she's over here barking at I don't know what, because there's nothing else in here, so she's barking at something <laughs> underneath the couch. You're a good dog. Um, oh. This is a fun one. Uh, Jervalin, Jervl I believe is I'm pronouncing this right, has beaten Halo 2 Lasso Deathless for the $20,000 challenge set by Charlie mm -hmm. Critical White. I don't know if wow. you saw this, row, but this was kind of crazy. Uh, it was done last night, I believe, because I watched a little clip of it. But essentially, they had to play Halo 2 on Legendary, all skulls active, except the one that helps you, which is like it makes you invisible. Um, and they couldn't die. And it was that's pretty impressive. That's pretty that's impressive. That, yeah, he streamed the whole thing. I think you can go watch it right now. It was seven hours almost on the dot. And I really didn't think anyone would do it, if I'm being honest. Like when he set the challenge, because he originally set it for 5000 and no one was doing it. So he upped it to 20K and. Shout out to Gervalin. He did it. I don't know. How, I, I really don't understand how he did it. I, I kind of want to put some time aside to watch because I don't even it's, know where to begin. 
like, yeah, it's definitely a see to believe sort of thing. I, I think. It's yeah, like but, hearing that is like, there's no way somebody did that, but right, someone did. Yeah, and well, also there's a mission that like I don't remember which one. I th- I think it's like midway through the game where you can die before it loads. Like if like because you spawn in a pit with enemies shooting at you. So I, how did he not die? <laughs> there, I don't know. I really need to watch this though. Congratulations to him. Yes, congratulations on the twenty thousand dollars, bro. All right, let's get into what have you been playing, bro? As I discussed or said a little bit at the beginning, I've been pretty busy yeah, in school, but I'll, I'll talk about like my most recent things. I played a game called Eastward. Uh, that okay. is an indie game. Uh, it's very similar to Earthbound and Final Fantasy, but instead of like turn based, it's uh, it's more action. And, and um, I'm sorry, Eastward. Yeah. So we said eastward, yeah, eastward, yeah, okay. eastward, and it's about uh, it's like a found family. Like Sam is <laughs> this guy's quote unquote daughter that he's protecting. She's got magical powers. They're escaping from this darkness. It's 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 a crazy story, but it's beautiful at pixel art, and I'm having a, a good time playing it. Um, the characters are awesome. I'm like finding myself talking to every single character that's in the world just to piece the story together um but yeah i'm having a, a good time with that it's been a while since i touched that so i'm kind of hazy on it no no but, you're, uh, you're fine it, do you remember the gameplay mechanics at all this looks kind of cool um it's pretty basic actually it's like it's like zelda like 2d oh, zelda stuff. okay so you're okay. like swinging your your pan in in this case instead of uh instead of a sword and sam your partner uh, the little girl has her own move set too so you can move or you could switch between the two characters and she has magical powers to te- telekinesis stuff yeah, wield um, a trusty frying pan and mystic powers as you fight yes. through a deadly miasma devouring the land. Whoa, I love the art. Oh my god, yes, the this art is beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah. yeah, everyone, check this out. I actually might play this. This looks really cool. Oh my god, it is cool, yeah. how did I not see this somewhere? <laughs> it came out, I think, last year. Um, it was on my my list of favorite games of last year, even though I haven't beaten it yet. But right, no, having no, but, a blast with it so far. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. This is definitely. I'm definitely buying this. <laughs> <laughs> this thing looks nuts. I. Yeah. This looks crazy. Yeah. Everyone, check this out. Um. But uh, I've. Uh, I haven't been playing too too much. I've been stuck on Slay the Spire really. Uh. So every few moments I have, I'll play like a run or two of that, and I'm having a good time with uh, Slay the Spire. Um, just as a reminder, everyone, it was the card-like roguelite that I was playing last week. And it's just a great game. I like that the, the card-building mechanics change, like, every run. Not I haven't had a single run that's the same as another one. Like, it's just, like, the there's so many cards that your run will be different every time. And there's so many, um, uh, I guess you could, would call them, like, events that you can run into that, like, anything could happen. Like, you could get 100 gold, or you could lose 200 gold, or, like, you could sacrifice half your health, but you have a card that makes it only damage deals like one damage that turn. There's just so much good stuff about this game. And a lot of people know it's good, but I just discovered it like two weeks ago and I've been sucked into it ever since. So it's really honestly, it's just been that I've been watching my wife play Last of Us Part Two, which is really cool. Um, she's playing that game for the first time, finally, and that's just exciting to be able to watch that. Uh, yeah. But aside from that. That's really I, I'm I'm in the same boat as you. I haven't really been doing anything else. I've been busy doing this and work and all that. So that's it for I me. I have I have a quick question. Yes, or maybe it's quick. I don't know. But Slay no. the Spire is like a deck deck building game, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how do you are you a Marvel fan? Yes. At all? How do you feel about Midnight Suns? Is that something? That's that a great question. So, um, on surface level, I don't like it. Um, mm-hmm. like just on. Top level, I look at it. The couple trailers I've seen, I think it's clear that they're not super confident either because we don't we haven't seen a lot about the game. Um, or maybe that is them being confident. I'm not sure, but the little bit I've seen of the game, I'm just like, ah. I mean, like I said on the show once, it's a bit mean, but I really meant it. It was like the game that everyone wants, but with the gameplay no one asked for. Like, like, yeah. did I really want a Marvel <laughs> game with? card mechanics i don't think so but maybe it'll be fun i love slay the spire but that's such a completely different type of game than what they're trying to do here they're trying to do a tactical game but with cards then but it's an rts and you have like a set deck i think and you you can like equip different i don't I, i really don't know i hope it's good because like 
this has been such like a slow year anyways so like we could use like something that's good if i remember correctly isn't it coming out in october midnight i think um, so i think you're right um and then uh there's it, there's a couple cool things like they they set up like you can be in the mansion and like you can walk around so you there's like relationships and things i'm like okay that sounds kind of cool but that sounded cool yeah <laughs> yes but you know it's all around this card based mechanic that I, again on the surface level i'm like and it's not it. Yeah, October seventh is the date. So we'll have to see. It's it's close. We'll know. Close. We'll know soon. Yeah. Oh god! It even says fight and strategize like a superhero. Like oh, that doesn't. <laughs> that's a great catch line. I feel like like just just describing that. I'm like uh, no thanks. But hey, I hope I'm wrong. I, I I always bring up I was super wrong about Guardians of the Galaxy. I I shit on that game every second I got. Every like every time I saw it, I hated it more just the way it looked. And then I played it and I blew me away i loved yeah. that game so yeah. hopefully i'm wrong yeah. rumor roundup hilariously call of duty Marvel Warfare for two multiplayer images released by the los angeles rams a few days ago <laughs> an la rams player cameron dicker revealed a glimpse of the lobby screen of the game as well as multiple players tweeting about the event and one making a very quick video about the opening of of a multiplayer match but you can't really see anything uh not much to give here i looked through some of the images i mean it really was just the lobbies and screens curious uh if they were allowed to do that i almost want to say no but you would think they would have made it clear you couldn't so i don't know maybe they were just like who cares uh yeah. but uh we're so close to the beta like i doubt they cared that much when all this was leaked yeah it, it wasn't like you like you were saying that the leaks that came out weren't that that crazy like no. they're just menu screens and stuff like that but it is funny i feel like this has happened before with other games where a celebrity is just like i have no idea how video games work this is <laughs> a really cool game that i'm playing let me share it with my fans my favorite <laughs> is when they have like celebrity voice actors and they're like yeah i was i came back for the sequel and they're like what <laughs> that's my that's always sequel? my favorite that's always yeah. my favorite because they're just like why wouldn't i talk about it it's, it's weird to them not to talk about it yeah um, this one is interesting. So this is via Engadget. Um, Google is not shutting down Stadia. Now, I don't believe them, <laughs> but <laughs> but this is official t <laughs> tweet from Stadia. I thought I would put in the show that told them that quote Stadia is not shutting down end quote, and that's kind of really it. Um, all right. We already know they were trying to sell off Stadia, so I don't know why we're why that was even a thing. Why would they reply to that? That just seems like you're just opening the avenue for people to dunk on you. But hey, it happened and uh, figured I'd talk about it. Um, do you have a relationship with Stadia? Uh, a very small one. Like when Cyberpunk 2077 came out, my PC isn't the best. It's like it's a gaming laptop, but it can't run like your cyberpunks, your, yeah. I don't know, your, those big Ted pole games that are super graphically, yeah, heavy. And I decided to use my Stadia free trial and try Cyberpunk on it, and it ran pretty good. Like, the, the technology on Stadia, like, it works. I think it works, and I think it's a good platform for those who, who need it. But the problem is, like, like we're talking about here, Google doesn't seem to want to support it. They're, like, pulling out, like, their first party they plans completely that they shelved like their entire first party studios like yeah that tells so me all expect? i need to know i don't care if you're exactly. shutting it down you're clearly not supporting it exactly yeah so i i think it it's a shame because i think the technology is is cool but yeah everything else around it like the games that they have on there are just like bleh and they're not supporting it enough for me to to shove out the money to keep using the good technology that i think it has yeah i agree i i have heard from people that have used a lot of it i've only used a tiny bit of it i think i tried it one time just to play destiny to see how it felt but i heard it's the best out there i heard it compared to like cloud gaming and all that like if you have to stream something geoforce now like that is the best one how you know take that with what you will i don't know if it was still great but stadia had a lot of potential but behind google it just feels like you know they they do this thing a lot so like it's not really surprising that they're just like eh, it didn't work moving on just like we are right now a linkedin post by game designer brad Bawaz revealed that rano studios formerly human head studios is making a game alongside helping with development of redfall not too much news here we just know that there is something being developed 
by Roundhouse Studios. Uh, currently, of course, they are helping develop Redfall alongside, of course, Arcane, um, Austin, I believe. So there's not really too much to report on here. I just want to bring this up. It's interesting. We'll have to see. It's probably an early talk if it's just like a single. We're just now hearing just the smallest tidbit of it. So I wouldn't be shocked if they're just ending pre-pro or something like that. As you talked about it on multiple shows, but it may bear repeating, Halo Infinite was arguably unfinished compared to the promise we received early on. And Potassium Forbes has a story on this. Now, we don't just have anyone talking about this. This is 343's Joe Staten. Of course, he used to be there, but he left um, like halfway through the moment. Never a good sign on the game. Talked in detail about how the game had been scaled back considerably. He recently uh, went on Game Maker's Notebook via Tech Radar. Quote, the team went through a lot of iterations on scope and biome variety before I joined. Even after I joined the team, we had to make choices about where to scale back. We didn't end up cutting that much ultimately from the open world. I don't believe him. But I know that from the original designs, there was a pretty significant scaling back of what the team had hoped at one point that they could deliver on. We knew that we needed to truly deliver a quality experience and scope our ambitions to make sure that the stuff that we did ship met expectations. End quote. Now, you can watch this whole article over, of course, on that podcast. Um, sorry, you can w- you can watch him in the whole interview. It's it's a pretty interesting. He does really kind of open up about all this uh, pretty unabashedly. I do think he um, uh, was nice. I don't think he threw anyone under the bus. He was very professional, which... Uh, I commend him, although some of the statements here I just can't imagine is true. <laughs> like, just he very he specifically says we did not cut that much. We know that they wanted like completely different biomes in the game. Like, they wanted snow and they wanted like a desert area. So, like, that's we we know that that was leaked. That was in the early like concept arts and things. Maybe that is what he meant. Like, it, it never met past those marks, but. This was strange. He went on there. He talked about it openly, and I'm glad. But it's still, it's almost like a cyberpunk situation. We're still in this weird middle ground of like, it was fine, but like, it's not what we were promised. I don't know. Do you have any anything to add to this? I've talked uh, about it so much on this show. I'm oh, almost yeah. tired of talking about it, to be honest. So, <laughs> well, what do you what do you have to add? Yeah, I don't have much. Like, I'm not a huge uh, Halo fan to begin with. Like, I've played. Halo Combat Evolved and and this one <laughs> and Halo Infinite. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's literally it. I played a bit of Halo 2, a bit Dan on the pot on Pod SP again. He's a huge yeah. Halo fan. He's been trying to get me to play it, but I just I just can't. But anyways, yeah, it like the, the Halo Infinite, the, the map was like it was pretty it was a good map, but it was kind of samey, wasn't it? Not? Yeah. Like it's all Yeah, no, it was pretty so, much the same thing. It was almost like yeah. the exact same thing over and over again. Yeah. So I can I don't believe them either. <laughs> yeah. I, so I think I, I think he's being very nice. I think he was being very yeah. professional. He seems like a very professional person. And and I, as far as I understand, they I think they restarted like development halfway through. The game was basically made, I believe, in like a year and a half to two years or something like that. Like, yeah, stuff went wrong. Like things were were wrong at, at the studio. Some, something happened majorly and probably him leaving and a lot and i want to i would love to see the what if like what could we have had we already saw like some biome differences i'm curious how the story would have been different because um it does seem like the story like ends and then starts again like two-thirds of the way like we end with the brutes and then like we get this whole last part of the game that seems to very much start and end like instantly a lot of weird story things too i'd love to hear about that one day Via Tidux on Twitter. Now, if you don't know who Tidux is, first off, he's a great follow on Twitter, but he's also a known leaker. Um, and he, he leaks just this, PlayStation X Discord. So we heard, of course, Xbox uh, had that little integration with Discord recently. And, of course, PlayStation, months ago, signed a deal uh, to have Discord integrated onto the systems. This is what he's heard. Native integration, voice chat integrated with parties, post feed to channels, activ- activity feeds, returns... Share pick and vids to Discord. Um, now, I think that, of course, the biggest one there is a native integration. So that means you will straight up be able to use Discord inside PlayStation and then voice chat will be integrated with parties, which is pretty crazy. That's that's very good. That is what they kind of hinted will be in um, the Xbox thing. But it is very impressive to see it on PlayStation. A little crazy that we s- 
that we got it on Xbox before PlayStation and we heard about the deal months beforehand. Still weird to me, but hey, with PlayStation still getting it. Happy. Um, I will say this is very cool for crossplay games. I never really thought about it, but now this opens like an entire avenue of like, you know, your buddies on PlayStation. You don't really have to worry about open Discord on a second thing. You just open it on your system and, and talk that way. Absolutely. Very, very good uh, quality of life changes. Are you going to be using this? I can't really see myself using this, honestly, because most of the people I play on are on my system already. But is this something that you're, like, happy to see? Yeah, definitely. Um, like like I was saying, Dan, huge Halo guy, he's he's on Xbox. He, do, he never touches his PlayStation, like, ever. <laughs> so it'll be cool to play, like, Fall Guys or those types of cross-play games uh, with him and not having to boot up my PC or use my phone or something to, to chat with him. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. I can see myself using it for sure. I agree. I I, I have a uh, a Destiny clan, and yeah. we use Discord for literally everything. So I could see like every now and then when we have some random person like from um a different uh system, like I could see using it for that. Like just being able to plug in on Discord on the system sounds pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's start the actual show for the week. Ooh. Let's talk about a strange occurrence that happened early in the week. Sacred Singles, oh, sorry, <clears throat> Sacred Symbols, the largest PlayStation podcast and one of the largest gaming Patreons ever, aired a segment on their show that revealed that the host of the show, Colin Moriarty, had received a casting script on the still-in-development Tomb Raider game that was revealed earlier in the year. They then read off the script, acted out by the other co-hosts, Chris Raygun and Dustin Furman. Uh, side sidebar, I had Dustin on uh, uh, last week in an cool. interview show, if you want to go check that out. All that is newsworthy enough, but it doesn't stop there. Square Enix actually filed a DMCA claim over that video on Patreon, prompting Patreon to contact Colin to remove the video. To make this even stranger, no other platform has seen a DMCA claim. The video segment has since been removed, but is still available on other versions of the videos. Oof. Now, let's, do you want to touch on this? You want to go through the whole thing? Uh... I think that's I think that's awesome that they were able to get a hold of that and share it. But that, so apparently, apparently he went into it. Someone just gave it to him, as, as far as I understand. Someone just dropped it, and I I want to say he trusted the source or something. But it was pretty detailed. Apparently, wow. Like it was. It had. A, we'll go into it. But there are whole parts of like the uh, scenes that he got to read and things. Very interesting. Let's get into this. Um, before we do that, the uh, vamp for me. Let me see what my dog is freaking out about. Okay, no problem. Oh man, I can't wait to see what the script is about. I like, I love the Tomb Raider games like so much. So I'm excited to see what they read. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. I just realized what it is. My wife's home, and that's she wanted oh. to go see my wife. Oh, all right. <laughs> now let's get to the let's get into the meat of the Tomb Raider news. It's called Project Jawbreaker, and it's described as a quote action adventure game set in a modern day world rocked by a mysterious cataclysm end quote Ooh. now here's a passage of the game that um they read on the show laura croft is now at the top of her game gone are the days of the young inexperienced woman dealing with matters of legacy and familial reckoning laura has let go of her childhood and fully embraced a life of adventure and purpose her legendary career has been laded in print and tabloids, tall tales of adventure that have inspired a new generation of Tomb Raiders to seek their fortunes in the world. And with this new phase of her life, Laura fully accepted her place among the ruins. For many years, Laura plum uh, plumbed the depths of forgotten places, played cat and mouse with many nefarious opponents, and worked to uncover, preserve, and protect the lost secrets of the world lest they fall into the wrong hands. But as the years have passed, Laura has become lonely at the top. The beginning of this next chapter presents Laura with the quintessential adult problem facing something too big to handle alone on this new adventure. Laura will encounter a challenge she can only overcome with a team at her side. Collaboration is foreign to her. She's always succeeded alone, so in this situation, she's a fish out of water. As for the actor, they are looking for a quote uh, for Colin Reed's quote, they are looking for a female in their mid 30s who's white, five foot six, athletic, and a prototype of Emily Blunt, Rosamund Pike, etc. Later on, Colin reads another note about the female actor, quote, romantic scenes with another female character, but that, quote, there is no nude or simulated sex, end quote. Boo. A good bit. 
<laughs> what do you see me? What do you mean no simulated sex? What the fuck am I paying for here? Uh, we got a good chunk of the game. I mean, that's basically the yeah. synopsis of the plot there. Um, not quite synopsis, but we got a good detailing of the beginnings of the games. First off, we're getting a, what was it? What, what did they, uh, uh, what, did the, what was the word they used? It was a very strange word. What is it? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, she's very like, um, uh, into the life of Tomb Raider, right? It, oh, here we go. Her legendary career has been laded in print and tabloids. So mm -hmm. she's known. Apparently she's going to have a new generation of Tomb Raiders. Fair curious what that means. Are we going to be like. Is that just for story purposes? Are we like influencing this team in some way? Are we controlling them? Is it just she has fans that try to like emulate her now or something? I don't know. What are some anything stick out from you in this? I mean, the synopsis sounds awesome to me. Like, I love the idea of her like being famous now. She's gotten rid of all the her baggage or moved past all of her baggage from yeah. her family stuff, and uh, that she's at the top of her game. Like, that sounds like a cool starting point to to play as laura the thing that worries me is the the group <laughs> of <laughs> tomb raiders like what does that look like gameplay wise is that is this like a guardians of the galaxy situation where we're star lord aka laura and then the other guardians are the tomb raiders yeah I guess, and we get to switch out every once in a while but or maybe they're there see... for like puzzles maybe yeah. or something I'm, I'm interested to see how that that plays out gameplay wise but i i love the tomb raider game so i'm excited to me see too what uh what this is I, the synopsis sounds awesome The emily blunt like yeah get her get her in here yeah what, i'm curious whatever curi looks like her, yeah. Yeah, yeah i'm <laughs> curious what um uh what this is going to mean for the actual like full-on story they make it clear that they 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 basically make it clear like we don't want to do the reboot trilogy we just did right they make it very clear gone are the days of family reckoning you know nothing about her dad or anything like that so really and there's actually more on this everyone go check out i i whenever i do things like this i never want to cover everything go check out there's several news stories you can actually go watch again what's even weird there was a dmca claim on patreon but the videos are still up so you can just go watch them on youtube i don't i don't know first off why square even did anything in the begin with because a you know they uh they actually argue that they you know they might have some legal standing here but when you DMCA it, it makes it look real. So now we know right. it's real. So yeah. why, you know, you could have just ignored it and we would have, you know, maybe it's real. I would have started all this with take it with a grain of salt instead of this is real because they paid a lawyer hundreds of thousands of dollars for a couple hours to promise like someone had to watch this video and be like, yeah, we have legal claim. All right, well, go ahead and DMCA it or whatever. So yeah, wow, strange all around. I'm excited. I'm still excited. Give me more Tomb Raider. Yeah, I know. We we haven't we haven't got a lot of Tomb Raider. Oh, and did you see that the um the actress is out? Alicia Vikander? Yes. And what is I up with that? that? What is up with that? that? So sad. We have the movie <laughs> already and we already lost that. <laughs> what how are we gonna have a second one now? I have no idea. <laughs> Bloomberg has our next story written up by Xi Ping Huang and Jason Schreier. It seems Activision Blizzard and NetEase were developing a World of Warcraft mobile game. And uh, that's an emphasis on were. NetEase, the second largest gaming company in China, has disbanded a team of more than 100 developers that were in the midst of developing the title for three years. Not much has been given out about the exact reason leading to the death of this project. But an insider told Bloomberg that the two companies disagreed over terms, and that is literally all we know. The title code named Neptune was going to be a massive multi multiplayer online role-playing game set in the same universe as World of Warcraft, it was set up as a spin-off and set in a different time period that World of Warcraft is currently set in. This is the second mobile title canceled by Blizzard. We heard about the Warcraft Pokemon Go style game that had also had four years of development. Money is no object over there, clearly. They're just straight up yeah. canceling projects that have been worked on for multiple years. I couldn't believe I could not believe I read for three years they were making this project and they were just like, no, nah, gone. And of course, my first answer row, but our first question is, what was so bad that you said, never mind? <laughs> so what was yeah. so bad? And I'm, I almost want to say this had to have been Activision Blizzard because I feel like NetEase would not have cared about anything. They very much have a blank checkbook over there. So I'm very curious if Activision Blizzard wanted something in this situation or if NetEase kind of 
you know, kind of like pulled on the money uh, mobile and was like, hey, we want X thing to happen. And they were just like, nope. And they just straight up just canceled a, an entire pending project. For, I, I'm not in much into the mobile game space, so this isn't going to affect me at all. But I do know that there's a lot of people that probably would like this. But it's just shocking that Activision Blizzard, no, uh, no stranger to canceling projects, but another canceled mobile game. Uh, and we're seeing this again, and we're seeing other canceled things. They canceled, um, uh, I wanted to say they had, like, oh, they fully reworked, like, Diablo Immortal when people were dogging on that, when, they, like, that was originally just yeah. going to be an online game, but they fully transported that to be able to play it on PC. Uh, that worked out very well for them. They made hundreds of thousands of dollars already, so, so uh, they money. definitely, they <laughs> definitely don't regret doing that, I'm sure. But, um, does anything scream at you that you want to talk about from this? Um, like like you, I'm not really into the mobile game stuff. There's like a couple of games that I dabble in from time to time, but yeah, the the thing that, like you were mentioning, that comes out to me is the the amount of time that was spent on this game. Yeah. To just like you said, just not do it anymore. I love um, that we have... don't know why. Like the person yeah. was was <laughs> was able to leak it, but they only know that something happened in terms of most likely money let's be real is something with money was involved and they disagreed over it it must have been a pretty big disagreement yeah because uh I, go ahead yeah, I, don't, I don't know if anybody is like uh going to be losing sleep over this cancellation i feel like I this is like so. like oh no why <laughs> no no but, my but, mobile yeah. game <laughs> yeah but um it is a bummer for those who are working on it i'm, I'm sure for the past three years yeah just, like all of that is just gone now yeah and but, i guess they can go talk to the World of Warcraft Pokemon Go people as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and very quick, apparently um, most of those people, some of those people were transitioned to other projects, but a lot of them were actually just straight up laid off, which is unfortunate. God. Yeah, that sucks. Riders has an exclusive on Tencent. The show loves talking about Tencent. <laughs> the largest social networking gaming firm in China, also widely criticized by its kowtowing to the Chinese Communist Party, plans on raising its stakes in Ubisoft. Julie Zhu and Selena Lee wrote that the gaming firm bought 5% of the gaming uh, group back in 2018 and has reached out to the Gimont family to increase their stake. According to one source, quote, Tencent is very determined to nail down the deal as Ubisoft is such an important strategic asset for Tencent, end quote. Now, if you didn't believe that sentence, uh, uh, listen to this. Tencent could offer up to 100 euros about $101.84 per share to acquire the stake from the Gilmont family who own about 15%. Unclear on how much they wanted. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked if it's all of it. We'll see. This is a staggering amount of money considering Ubisoft was trading around $44 before the news was released and the price ceiling for them was around eight a hundred and eight dollars back in 2018. So they are willing to spend the highest amount the share has ever gotten to, I believe, for the uh, percentages that the Gilmont family hold. This marks a continued push in the video games market by Tencent. Tencent owns stakes in a staggering, uh, in over 31 gaming companies, and outright owns about four of them. If this doesn't alarm you, you have undoubtedly heard about movie companies changing their art to best serve the Chinese market. That is something I think we can all agree we do not want here. Wow. When I read this, I could not believe... I read it... I probably read this three times because I could not believe that they are willing to spend almost triple the amount per share to grab the percentages, however much they want. It was unclear what the specific... Um, uh, they actually put out that um there was a of course non-binding agreement that they pushed to the gilmont family that could have asked for five percent i believe so an additional five percent but that's of course from the gilmont family which i believe has they con the of course the controlling interest of the company with a few of um the close friends and this was uh shocking to say the least Ro. what do you what did you make of this i i'm I'm, this is my first time hearing about how much it was. I, I heard, like, I saw the headlines and stuff, but I didn't mm -hmm. know how much <laughs> yes. they were willing to to get this from the Gimont family. Um, but yeah, like, Ubisoft is in 
has been in a very interesting place in the past couple of months slash years with their games and how they're releasing slash not releasing <laughs> things. Um, so it, it seems like this is where things are going, unfortunately. I, I, um, I have they... to agree with you. I, I will be shocked if they say no. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is unfortunate to say. I do not want Tencent to own any more of Ubisoft. <laughs> uh, it is awful to hear. Um, uh, they seek. I'm sure they want a controlling interest now, and that that is a hundred over a hundred per share is insanely aggressive. So that means a that basically is like that might be the best deal they ever get for those shares. And Gil, and we did hear rumors. I want to say two months ago that Gilmont might have been looking to leave anyways. So what a sweetheart deal. This is very, I want to, you know, not exactly the same, of course, but this is pretty similar to the Activision Blizzard situation where Microsoft came in and was like, seems like you guys got a lot of bad press. We could buy it all from you and give you a golden parachute out of this burning monsoon that you've created. And they took it and I will be I will frankly be shocked if the Gilmont family say no to this. Um, I do not see them. Uh, I did hear that he did not um, care too much about staying because he has no one to give it to, if I remember correctly. Like no one, yeah. none of his. Um, I want to say he used to have a son that used to work for him, but he did. He wasn't. He didn't have interests, so he left or something. So he might be looking for a way out. And I mean, there's no better offer than that. And I, I very much hope he doesn't because. If you guys haven't seen like the uh, the China demands in movies, um, just go research it. They make it clear that you can't do certain things. They make it clear that you have to <laughs> you have to basically say Taiwan isn't a country or never reference them in the first place. I, I forget. Um, I think there was uh, they originally took out that. Um, I think they put it back in, but Top Gun isn't in China anymore. But Top Gun uh, two had the Taiwanese flag on his jacket. And then I think they took it off for a little while, that. but then yeah. they put it back on clearly and it just didn't launch in China. So it seems like some movie companies are tired of, of doing that. Um, I will remind everyone uh, because I remember this clear as day and I can't believe they did this still Activision Blizzard. If you remember when they were doing their um war zone kind of teased for the next season showed a clip of tiananmen square if you don't know what tiananmen square first off shame on you go read <laughs> but if you <laughs> if you do know what tiananmen square is they showed the if infamous clip of the tiananmen square video and they took it off they took off the video about i want to say it was like 12 hours after they showed it and i think we all know why someone got a call and was like what are you doing and they took it off so we don't, sure, we don't like that. We don't want that. We don't want that, <laughs> especially when we have to pretend like a country doesn't exist for these people. Yeah. Yikes. Oh, yeah. Pokemon. <laughs> Let's move on to Pokemon. <laughs> the complete opposite of what we're just talking about. <laughs> Pokemon Scarlet and Violet had a Pokemon Presents feature released this week and detailed some of the different mechanics and stories we can expect in the next game. Unexpectedly, you got word of multiple storylines as well that will be featured in the game. One of them being, quote, treasure hunt end quote another being the traditional gym battles uh but in, uh you may go to any of them in any order for the first in the series and the last still being a mystery it showed some new pokemon and introduced terrestrial pokemon a new mechanic that changes the designs and stats of your pokemon and puts them in a crystal like state great battle sees a return in the series although players can attack in any order at any time uh, that they want, similar to the Pokemon Go raids, if you've ever played those. You will also get the legendaries at the start of the game and will be used as your mounts to travel around the world. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet releases worldwide November 18th, 2022. Yes. Give me your thoughts on this kind of feature that we saw. I watched it. <laughs> I'm not a huge Pokemon guy. I, I, I say that. I, I'm, I'm, I play a lot of them, but I'm not like sitting down, you know, taking notes and being like, oh shit. So can you right. give me like some some th things that stood out to you. Um, first off, are you a, a long time Pokemon fan or are, are you someone new to the series? Um, I've liked Pokemon for a while, like since elementary school. So I guess, yeah, I, I am a long time Pokemon fan, I guess. Um, I play the mainline games mainly. I, I Same haven't here. really, yeah. yeah, I don't do a lot of the spin off stuff. Me either, um, yeah. I played Pokken tournament for a bit. Pokemon Go, of course, everybody played Pokemon Go. Yeah, when that yeah, was a yeah. thing. 
But um, yeah, what stands out to me here is the 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 open world stuff. Obviously, we we got a taste of it with Pokemon Arceus um, Legend, which I I loved. But it being in a mainline game is going to be a lot of fun. Being able to do the gym battles or gyms at any order that you want sounds really cool. There's a treasure hunt that they're hinting at, which I think might be like the main quest, maybe. Yeah, I was I was actually going to ask you about that. I don't know if you got yeah. any more information on that. I couldn't find too much, but it just says treasure hunt. So you think that might be yeah. like the main <laughs> narrative kind of through line in the game? I, I think so. I think the person that was describing it, like the old man in the video, that's like the the teacher or the head of the school that you go to in the game. So that might be his quest for the students, like go do these, these things to become mm. a full fledged student. I don't, I don't know. I didn't yeah. find much information either. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, but, and, and that's a good thing to bring up. You are a student going to a school, which is yeah. interesting. That's completely different from, from anything we've ever played before. I think we're almost always a child just leaving home. So yeah. no, this is, <laughs> this is different for sure. I'm curious how that's going to work too. Like it looks like, uh, you, I wonder if you're. I wonder if there's gonna be like side quests or something now. Like, you, like in a school, I feel like that opens up so many avenues for your narrative. So, are we are we just getting straight up three stories and then that's it, or are we getting like some sort of like drippage of like maybe some side quests or something? Legend Arceus kind of had, I mean, Jesus, a th trillions of side quests. Yeah. Uh, like, I, it was infinite. I never it, like you could never not get one. So maybe we'll get a return to all of that. Um, I will say I do wish they, um, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm getting Pokemon out almost cause I'm playing so many of them. They're starting to like release every year. And when I saw the Terra stole Pokemon, I was like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. <laughs> like, this is like the thing for the game, right? This is the yeah. Gigamax or the, uh, uh, Mega, Mega Evolution. Evolution. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite. The Mega Evolution. I was, yeah. That was always I actually sick. like that a lot too. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> oh, if they brought back Mega Evolutions, I would have, sh I'd shut my mouth. I'd be like, yeah. yep, I love this one. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, yeah, aside from that, I, I, I do wish we would get something that drastically changed up the formula versus like, oh, now it's open world and that's mm -hmm. kind of it. So, Maybe I'll be surprised of the game. Hopefully, um, now it, I'm just waiting on how, what Pokemon are in the game. Like what? Like I my, one of my favorite things about when a Pokemon game comes out, I look at the list and I'm like, all right, what's my six? You know, like what's what's the right. six I'm working up towards? Yeah. Uh, so now I'm just waiting on that, and I'll I'll fully decide. Like, all right, this game is gonna be awesome, or I'm like, eh, okay, this will be all right. Are you a Scarlet or a Violet guy? Which one are you going for? I'm such a Pokemon guy. It's really, really depends on the variant exclusive. So like okay. I, I, if if I had to pick one right now, I'd go Violet. Now, yeah. the problem is the wife wants the Violet. So it, in reality, it's really the one that she wants and I get the other one. That's 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 the, that, that yeah. is that's the deal we made. I buy the one she didn't. So uh, okay. but, uh, you know, we always do the trading thing. You know, if, if she has something I need, she'll she'll grab it and trade it with me. So. There's nothing too bad, but yeah, I, 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 I Violet on surface level because the guy looks cool because he actually uses his wheels. Um, another weird thing, the guy was yeah. galloping <laughs> but had two giant wheels attached to him. So I was, I was, was like, weird. what the fuck? <laughs> maybe it's maybe he. Well, that would make less sense. I, I was gonna say maybe he uses that to like climb up mountains, but that you would you'd want your hands for that. Yeah, I don't know what was up with that. He was galloping with gi two giant wheels protruding from his body. So <laughs> who knows what the hell that was just just likes working out i guess uh, are uh and you said you were violet right uh yeah i think I, I have to agree violet would probably be the one that i go for pokemon as well that's usually what i lean towards yeah. but sometimes there's like characters that are in specific games i'm like dang that design is so cool i would love to play this game to see that character more often yeah i agree and that, yeah and like and scarlet they have like the professor like the cave woman design yes. like, that's a cool design yes. i like that more than the professor i agree I, I, yeah. it's like i kind of want the other one but yeah it's whatever <laughs> i i will uh there was one where i forget which one but they had two different gym uh, leaders i was like well the other one looks way cooler i want to fight them but I, but i need the pokemon from this one so like i, I don't really have a choice here but Ugh. that happened to me for short and shield there was like uh i don't remember the, the character's name but it's like you're in that version I want that version, but yeah. in this version, you have that character. I think it was like an ice style gym versus something else or something. I don't yeah. remember, but God, yes. that was a really good one too. So, uh, uh, I don't know why, but I really liked, I really liked that one. Mm -hmm. Sun and Moon as well. More of the harassment Bungie's face has come to the surface. A lot of this is horrific, so I'm not going to get into it. If you want a full accounting, go to uh, therecord.com and read the story. 
And it's, of course, named Judge Orders Waterloo Business to name customers who doxed threatened Bungie employees. Um, so someone, this is the kind of TLDR, but please go give it a click. It was a fascinating read, to say the least. Someone used the service Text Now, which lets users make anonymous phone calls, to call the Bungie office and used racial slurs against basically anyone who answered the phone. And then multiple people started receiving text and voicemails saying basically the same horrible things. And then one employee received a pizza at his house address. Which is, of course, scary because that means whoever this is knows where you live. So I wanted to bring this up kind of as a correction and also just a highlight. So last week, was it last week? It might have been the week before. Eh, it probably was last week. When we originally heard, like, Bungie was saying, like, look, we're walking back because we're just facing way too much harassment. And originally, I, of course, sided with Bungie being like, eh, it's wise. If you are actually having an issue, step back. It's not worth it. But I was dismissive originally. I was like, yeah, this is the internet, right? Like, you kind of expect people to suck. But this is on a whole other level. And I actually tweeted about this yesterday as well when I found out about this. Uh, this, the thing, if you, again, if you want a full record, they, they, they tell you everything. Go, go over to the news article. It um, was wild to say the least. And they are taking them to court. The, the judge is ordering text now to name whoever did this. So hopefully we will see some sort of justice. I've always said we need some way to eliminate anonymity on internet if we want it to be <laughs> any sort of uh, safe. accountability, a safe, yeah, account, yeah, yeah whatever yeah. word. Twitter had that option. They refused to use it. I have always said the verification service should make you a real person. Who cares? Articles or whatever the hell they want you to do to be verified. Your verification should be like, no, you're a real person. You're not a bot. Here's your little thing that tells everyone that you are a person and we, and a person has verified that you have an ID or something. I don't know. But the only way for this to stop is for people to have there's some sort of thin accountability up, uh, atop of all of our Internet. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to go into the the what they actually got either. Like it was pretty messed up. Yeah, it's pretty fucked. But yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't blame Bungie for wanting to to step back. As upset as it is, like I'm a huge Destiny. I think you're a huge. Yes, Destiny fan. I am. Dude, I didn't yeah. know you were a huge I, Destiny fan either. I love Destiny. I've been playing Destiny since like 2014. Yeah, like the original one. Me too. Destiny Two, fantastic. Love the games. I uh, love Bungie. Love the people who work on the game. So it's it sucks to see this because I love hearing about the game from them. What's next? I love the twelve. Tell me more. I love. Yes, I, I love reading them every week, and they have very. And I don't know. Maybe this. Maybe it's just coincidental. I know that it's lined up, but it does seem like it's a lot thinner than usual. Yeah, like absolutely. we're getting like a few paragraphs where we'd get almost like essays before. Like, and yeah. you know, not everything was like the best stuff, but it was like kind of like a little glimpse of like what was going on that week and stuff. And now it's like. Now it's yeah. like, hey, you know, this, this. All right, see you next week. It's like, oh, Bye. no. <laughs> <It's> like, <okay. laughs> I don't want that. But again, I don't, I mean, I don't blame them. People can only take so much, right? Yeah, absolutely. Tom Warren has a great write-up on video games spent. And this is over on um, uh, The Verge, of course. According to the NPD, consumer spending on video game products have fallen $1.78 billion in quarter two. Overall spending in video gaming in the U.S. totaled $12.35 billion in the most recent quarter, which is down 13% year over year. This expands on the losses we talked about Microsoft faced last episode, and Sony also saw a, a similar slump. Video game softwares for Sony fell 26% year over year. And like predicted by some finance firms early in the year, subscription services are the only positive gain this year so um i don't know if you ever caught this but earlier in the year there's a few finance firms that basically predicted that all video games basically will will have a drop except for subscription services and it's 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 that's how it's basically working out everyone's seeing a kind of equal drop and subscriptions are the only gain as People are probably finding the services of PlayStation Plus, Gold, Game Pass, more incentivized. They're slowly moving the services. And I want to pose this question to you and, you know, I get also myself, but everyone listening. Are we seeing a correlation now? Of course, correlation doesn't mean causation, but are we, are we seeing a correlation? Subscription services are going up. Video games are going down. Is that going to continue to happen? Maybe are we going to continue to see game sales fall as people are just going to be like, 
Ah, I'll wait for it on Game Pass. Ah, I'm going to wait for it on PlayStation Plus Premium. Ah, Switch Online is good enough for me. I don't really need to buy anything right now. What are your thoughts? I don't... I don't know. I want to think about it for a second. What What do you think? Is this some sort of trend we may see, which will be ho horrific, to say the least, if people don't <laughs> buy games? But um, aside yeah. from that, do you think this might be a beginning of a trend we might start seeing? And again, this could be of COVID, of course. Last year you know was it was semi-increased because people just couldn't leave their house so they just bought things yeah. so that could also sure. be attributed to all this i don't want to uh uh piece together false uh causations here yeah yeah i i think covid does have a big uh role to play in it as well like you were saying like i again i've been pretty pretty busy with school and i have been buying that many games but i haven't like or haven't had the chance to play many games, but I haven't like canceled my subscriptions because of that. Like I've yeah. pulled on to Game Pass, held on to those stuff, even though I'm paying for it, even though I'm not technically using it. And I feel like there's a lot of people in that boat where they're like, okay, I'm, I gotta go to work, but maybe I'll have the time to hop on and play a Game Pass game every now and again. I wanna hold on to that subscription just in case I, I do get the time. And I don't wanna lose out on on that, the games that might come. And I do think that, um, I have been waiting for games to come on Game Pass recently. I think a like, lot of people have. I don't think yeah, you're alone at all. There's There's been like a couple of announcements like, that's going to be on Game Pass in a couple months. I, I guarantee it. I'll wait. I won't buy it. And lo and behold, it, it does come maybe six months later or, yeah, or at some point faster. it comes. Yeah. Right? I, I so, have to admit, I agree. I've done. I've basically. Excuse me. I've basically stopped buying indie games, which is a shame to say. I should, yeah, I should be buying yeah. more, but almost all of them I want to play come to Game Pass yeah. day and date most of the time too. Yeah. And I find it hard to justify buying it because I'm like, well, I can play it and beat it, right? Like, why should I buy it? But you know, at the end of the day, like, sh like, should I feel incentivized to buy? It? I try to support the devs when I cancel. So like, um, for instance, um. Uh, I played the quarry. Um, I actually borrowed it from my friend Alex, and I beat it in like two days. Um, and then he, and then I gave it back to him. I, as soon as that, I see that game for like forty bucks, I'll buy it because I feel like I'm obligated to give them some sort of money. That game was not worth seventy dollars, so I'm not spending seventy dollars <laughs> yeah, on it. But I will, <laughs> yeah. But I will, I will buy the game whenever I see it. That's like forty bucks. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I you deserve money. I played your game completely and spent no money. Um. And maybe I should adapt that, or maybe everyone listening as well should try and adapt it to indie games. If you have a special indie game, like maybe I should buy, uh, I should uh, I buy Slay the Spire. I have I'm playing that through Game Pass, so I haven't spent a dime, but I've beaten it three times now. So, mm -hmm. so like maybe yeah. I should like just fork over what twenty dollars or whatever it costs just to be like, hey, I get you know here's some money. Like I I should probably pay you for this. So, I I think I, I don't think we are. Uh, late enough in subscriptions to actually see a noticeable loss so i don't want to be quick to be like game pass is killing games but <laughs> i will say we should definitely keep an eye on that. yeah definitely. date That's updates tactics ogre reborn was finally announced as a reminder this game has been leaked five different times or something like that It'll be coming to Switch, Steam, PS4, PS5 on November 11th shame on you and not coming to Xbox very upset November, by the way, getting very stacked out of nowhere. We're getting multiple games November. So get ready. These are your games with golds for the month. Coleco is it going to be available August 1st to the 31st. Scourgebringer is available August 16th to September 15th. Saints Row 2 is available August 1st to the 15th. Monaco, what's yours is mine. Available August 16th to the 31st. I don't know what that is. I kind of want to look it up. Uh, I'm curious. Yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely going to look up whatever that is. Monaco? Okay. All right. Now, very quickly, let's go over the Game Pass games for the month. Of course, every time this little sheet goes live, we read what's coming to Game Pass for the month. So, available as of recording, Ghost Recon's Wildlands, Cloud Console, and PC. Very interesting game. I enjoyed my time with it, although I won't uh, beg anyone to play that game. If you want to play an open world Ubisoft game, there you go. Shenzhen IO coming to PC Game Pass. ID at Xbox title August 4th. I want to read this. What is this? An open ended programming puzzle game that challenges players to build circuits using a variety of components inspired by real world electronics engineering. 
The game takes place on a journey to a near future Sinjin, the electronics manufacturing capital of the world. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, that's kind of cool. Turbo Golf Racing, which <laughs> just looks like Rocket League. I mean, yeah, my God. Try to hide it, please. Jesus. Cloud <laughs> PC, and it's coming to Xbox X and S uh, for Game Pass. I think it's only on those platforms. Uh, it is another idea at Xbox, August 4th. Available day one on Game Pass. <laughs> I need to read this. Turbo Golf Racing is an arcade-style sports racing game for up to eight players online. Drive, boost, jump, flip, and fly your turbo-powered car. Slam into oversized basketball... Sorry, golf balls. Race your friends in Explosive Dash the finish flag. Wow. I mean... Wow. <laughs> it's, wow. They're not even hiding it. Gay. It 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 looks it looks like Rocket League. It definitely looks like Rocket League. But like the screenshots that I'm seeing here, like it looks it's kind of fun. Not gonna lie. Oh, I don't doubt it because if yeah. I mean, I, it's it's that Smash Brothers situation where like just copy it if you're going if yeah. you're going to copy it, just copy it all the way. So like if yeah. you're gonna copy the game, all the way with it. Do it. Two Point Campus, which I've heard good things. I'm gonna read this one too. Cloud Console and PC, August 9th. Available day one on Game Pass. Build the university of your dreams with Two Point Campus. The sim with the twist from the makers of Two Point Hospital. Build, hire staff, and run an academic institution packed with wild courses. Okay, I heard a lot about Two Point Hospital, and I don't know why Two Point Campus was so highly recommended. I might check this out again. It's on Game Pass, so I have no, no problem checking it out. The screenshot they have provided is quite interesting, to say the least. This is a very strange-looking game. <laughs> oh, God. Cooking Simulator, Cloud Console and PC, August 11th. Expeditions Rome, PC, August 11th. Off-World Trading Company, PC. This is an ID at Xbox, August 11th. That is everything. Now, as a reminder, we read off everything that's going to be leaving in that month. So leaving August 15th, as a reminder, this will be gone from Game Pass. So either play it until you're finished, buy the game outright. And if you buy it while it's still in Game Pass, you have 20% off of the game. So make sure if you want any of these games, you either finish it up or you go out and buy them. Boyfriend Dungeon, Cloud Console and PC. Curse of the Dead Gods, Cloud Console and PC. Live. Library of Ruina, Cloud Console and PC, Starman Starmancer, which was game preview on PC, Train Sim World 2, Cloud Console, and PC. Now, I did want to play Boyfriend Dungeon. I only have 10 days, basically, so I, I need to jump on that. I very much wanted to try that game out, and I have not touched it, but it's literally downloaded on my system, so I need to try it. Do you recommend? Lots of fun. Oh, did you play it? I have, yes. Oh, Jesus. Okay. I need to play it. I need to play it. Now we end the show like we began it with a single question, Ro. This, yes. of course, is what's queued up. Now, this is only just for you. This is for everyone listening at home. You tell us what's queued up for the weekend. You can, of course, go into the comments or you can DM us over on patreon.com slash YouTubers where you can support us on any tier that you select for additional benefits like DMing to get on the show, uh, getting your credits read at the end of the show, etc., etc. Remember, YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, podcast services, Five star review, all those good things. Thank you so much for doing all that. But, bro, what do you have queued up for the week? This, of course, can be a game, TV show, a podcast, a movie, Ooh. a comic book, a book, anything of those natures. Please tell me, what do you have queued up for the weekend? Okay. Um, I, I didn't think we could do other things than games. I didn't. Okay. All right. So, I'm not I one have... of these hacks like <laughs> Gage over on PXN Podcast trying to take <laughs> take out my homie. Damn. For the win. All right, Gage. Called out, Gage. I gotta show him this later. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna read some manga this weekend. Oh, now okay. I, Please tell yeah. me. Now, I'm going to now flood you with millions of questions. So I apologize yes. for what's about to happen. But what's okay. the manga? <laughs> I'm Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man. I heard about this. So I, I heard. Um, I follow like the anime Reddit, and someone okay. just posted like they're they're starting like. The run of Chainsaw Man. What's like uh what's the uh what's the, like the, the sell? selling pitch? Oh man. Uh I don't want to give away too much, but it, it's basically about okay. a boy or a, a teenager named Denji, who is a demon hunter who works for demon hunters rather, and he could turn into a demon himself. So he's Whoa. a fiend, is what they call humans who could turn into demons. And he is a chainsaw man 
chainsaw fiend and um god there's so much but he basically had a terrible (laughs) he he had a terrible childhood okay and and uh he likes girls that like him and he gets manipulated by them it's 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 a it's a crazy tale but it has some awesome like shonen action scenes if that's oh, all you want okay that. yeah that's as soon as you said showing yeah. an action scene i'm like all right i'm getting into this but but, but yeah that it, sounds it like an a... awesome like story on the on the inside as well okay I, at first i was getting yu yu Hakusho vibes but that seems like it it's oh, it quickly like turned at near the end there so but yeah. but yeah <laughs> if it's anything like yu yu Hakusho, i love it but um very quickly i'm trying to get back into some of the animes is, is there something that you like really want to i need to go to i i'm basically a blank slate i fin i'm i'm finishing up a rewatch of naruto shippuden because i never watched it fully the way through i'm like two-thirds of the way through that is there like a burning anime out there that i need to be watching i i watched one punch man i need to finish no no, i'm up to date on my hero so i don't need to watch that i don't think so those are the vibes that you're into have you watched hunter hunter before no no. well it's by the same people who made or the same author who made yu yu Hakusho. so you might yeah same same guy so, so you might like it. it's i used it's i used to work at a gamestop though. really quick i used to work at a yeah. gamestop and whenever i would talk about anime they would say did you watch hunter x hunter and i would say no and they would look at me as if i killed a puppy or something like that like they, they would be <laughs> disgusted i mean I uh, like i haven't watched you. it and they're like oh. <laughs> so so i'm very much used to the hunter x hunter recommendation i've never okay. sat down to watch it so so i upon your recommendation role, i will be watching that this weekend nice it's my favorite it's my favorite your fa- anime. favorite anime it. my favorite anime. whoa yeah. okay yeah. okay okay that makes me 20 <laughs> times more excited now all right okay you clearly are a uh connoisseur of anime so you know your shit so that that makes me a lot of uh, very excited hunter x hunter okay is this a long series is this this isn't like a one piece situation right it's long but it's not a one piece situation okay. it has okay. i think it has five seasons and I oh think season okay That's four funny. is I, it's it's not like 12 episode seasons though they're like they can go kind of long it's like but 24 or something yeah. yeah yeah that's not bad though i mean like i said naruto like yeah that's true you yeah. want to talk you want to talk about filler <laughs> oh my god god yeah Naruto's crazy. I, so i got all the books right here but oh you do yeah yeah that is so cool all the manga there. i've always wanted to i just i can't i I mean, look at this fucking place. You know, like, <laughs> where am I going to put it? Where am I going to put this? Where am I going to put that? I've always wanted to collect the mangas. And I, I can't. I can't. I've always wanted to do that. I've always wanted to collect, like, the, the shows, too. Like, just to have them. Because yeah. it's so annoying trying to find these shows to fucking watch sometimes. So I got the Naruto, the box set. Only one of them, though. Oh, my God. That's so yeah. sick. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I don't have too much queued up for this weekend. I, I really... Ha- I'm, I'm going to watch Hunter x Hunter now. Um, yes. I'm kind of done with Slay. I think I might try. I I don't know what I'm doing. I'm on the fourth character, the Watcher, and then I'm finding keys. So I, I don't know what I'm doing with these things. I might like try and beat it with the keys to see what happens. Because I do want to see what's going to happen if I go to the end and have all three of them. Aside from that, though, I I'm the, I have a I have a blank week. I, I'm going to be doing a lot for the show, prepping a, a good bit of things, reaching out to a couple people. So it won't be too too much I'll be doing. So I don't have a very exciting what's cute for the week. But I will be watching Hunter x Hunter, which I'm excited for now. That is the show for the week. Thank you so much, Ro, for joining me this week. You you saved my ass. A little behind the scenes, uh, Achievers. Um, someone last minute, I mean, basically as last minute as you can get, canceled on the show. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> and I reached, out, I reached out to Christian. I was like, do you have anyone? And, and he recommended you. And I'm, I'm glad Aww. he did. You were, you were uh, fucking great, man. Thank you. Thank you. No. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yes. no, this was fun. Uh, where can uh, the people find you? Well, you could find me on Twitter at Roro, which is R A U W R O. I know it's weird. I had to look at it me. two to three times when I was <laughs> tweeting at you guys to make sure I wrote it correctly. It's like kept <laughs> fucking it up. I would put like a W where there wasn't one. <laughs> I was messing it up <laughs> so <know>. bad. <laughs> it's it's a weird one. But you you could also find me on Podcast PXN. We record every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Twitch and YouTube, where we talk about video games much like like we did here today. Very very good yeah. though. You you guys are doing the live thing. I've always thought about doing the live. We did it actually in the early days. Where you, where we, I would just put it live, cause like, why not? But yeah. uh, it's something I might get back into. And, and watching the Jeopardy thing, I'm like, ah, like there's really no reason not to like just have it, just have it live, like have it for there. fun. So 
uh yeah. yeah the first off great again great job over there 150 that's not, that's not a small thing so congratulations on that again congratulations on the great episode of jeopardy too um you almost did it you almost did it of course uh, uh you were close <laughs> i love how close it got and it was clear that like you guys weren't doing anything fishy like it was like yeah. very close like except all gauge, the way through know. except gauge of course yeah <laughs> and, i mean gauge i can't believe he's even on the show right i can't believe it the dude that I, let's talk about gauge for a little bit so let's talk about this gauge. guy <laughs> this guy not only says i'm doubting your score like i'm some sort of teenager <laughs> like i'm sitting there like oh let me fake my score to these people first off gauge how dare you if you used your brain for five seconds you would have realized i don't have a buzzer so like i have no way of of being like cut out since i'm re- leaving the show gauge all right gauge. you're way too attractive Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Thank God. you so much for playing along with me, though, over the weekend. Um, oh, Ro, that was fun. I had, a, I had a lot of fun fucking around. And um, yeah. I'm glad that justice was served to Dan. Has justice been served? Uh, I mean, you guys admitted you were wrong, so that was good enough for me. I don't know if that's good I enough for him. I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't know about the other guys. They, they're doubling down. <laughs> Gage will never, you know, Gage, he's blinded. He's blinded by jealousy. I get it. You know, I get it. <laughs> Thank you so much, man, for joining me. This was a great episode. Everyone, remember all the things, YouTube, podcast services, blah, blah, blah. Thank you. And until next time, go Chief.